welcome to this lecture so this is the last uh, tutorial session or problem solving session for this uh, NPTEL course of calculus of one real variable so in today's problem solving session we will be looking at the problems of week 8 which I was uh, given in the previous run of this course and I will be going through 10 problems here so I have already shared my screen I hope you guys can view the screen uh, view my shared screen and also can hear my voice if you cannot uh, then please let me know in the chat box and and any at any point I will, after solving the problems i will be waiting a few moments for questions so if you guys have any questions you can unmute yourself and ask and otherwise you can also type it in the chat box i will be monitoring that okay so let us go to the problems okay so the first problem of uh, today it asks to check the limit of the sequence xn uh, which is given by five to the power n by n factorial. Okay, so to check this, we can use the ratio test. Which tells us that for a sequence n, if the limit n tends to infinity, a n plus 1, divided by a n is given by l then if l is less than 1 remember the sign here it is less than not less than equal to if l is less than 1 then Limit n tends to infinity, a n goes to 0. So, we are going to use this result to check whether this sequence that is given here, the this is converging or not, we will check that and from there we can uh, check the limit. So, the limit is, let me use a different color, the limit is given by xn which is this so with ratio test we will have to check this parameter. So, what will be xn plus 1 here? It will be this, and xn will be similarly 5 to the power n, n factorial. So, we can rewrite this. like this so here these two cancels out to give 5 and we can write always n plus 1 factorial as n plus 1 times n factorial so they will cancel out to give n plus 1 so this reduces to limit n tends to infinity 5 over n over n plus 1 so clearly when n tends to infinity this is going to 0 and 0 is less than 1 so from ratio test
we can say that limit n tends to infinity xn which is equal to limit n tends to infinity 5 to the power n by n factorial is actually 0 okay so this is our answer so this comes from this and we can check the given options and we'll see that the third option is the correct one so this is the correct option and this is our answer okay so any questions here please let me know if you guys have any questions here otherwise i will go to the next problem okay so i don't think there are any questions so let me go to the next problem of today so the next problem again ask us to calculate a limit so limit of a n where a n is given by 4 minus 7 n cube divided by n cube plus 1 so we have to check the limit in tends to infinity in okay so we have done this problem uh, quite a few and uh, towards the first few lectures so let us do again one of them So we can do one thing, we can divide by n cube in both top and bottom. So that will give us limit instance to infinity, 4 minus 7 n cube divided by n cube by n cube plus 1 divided by n cube, which will be equal to limit intense to infinity. 4 by n cube minus 7 1 plus 1 by n cube now we know limit in tends to infinity 1 by n cube is going to be 0 right so this is trivial so here we can just put this limit so the first time here we will go to 0 minus 7 then divided by 1 plus 0 so the limit is going to be minus 7 so that is our answer here so let me write it out clearly limit n tends to infinity a n limit n tends to infinity 4 minus 7 n cube by n cube plus 1 is equal to minus 7 So this is our answer and if we look at the options here again we will see that the third option here which is minus 7 resembles the one that we have obtained here so this is the correct answer okay any question here if you guys have any question please let me know Otherwise, we'll move to the next problem. Okay, so I don't see any questions. So let us go to the next problem, which is problem number three. 
So here we are given a statement that xn v are Cauchy sequence of real numbers. Then we have to tell which of these options are true or if all of them are true. Okay. So xn is a Cauchy sequence of real numbers. And what is a Cauchy sequence? It is a sequence where the as the sequence progresses, the terms they correspondingly get uh, closer to one another. Okay. So and there is one theorem that we can directly apply here that states, so let me write it. That states that every Cauchy sequence of real numbers converges. So if we take this theorem into account, then it obviously follows that xn, which is a Cauchy sequence of real numbers, this is convergent. So, which is our here option number two. So, this one is correct. Now, if a sequence is convergent, that implies that limit tends to infinity xn, this is uh, not equal to infinity. So, this is not diverging, this is actually this exists. Okay, so this we are getting from the fact that the sequence is converging, and if this exists, that means the sequence has a unit limit because this parameter here has a unique value unique value and that implies that xn has a unique limit so which again implies that option 3 here is true. Okay. Now, we are left with the first option which is stating that the sequence is a bounded sequence. So, let us check whether this is true or not. What is, the, what is a bounded sequence? That means, we will find the number m for any in for all n belonging to the set of natural numbers such that the xn element uh, that is uh, less than this uh, value m. So, that means the sequence is bounded. So, we can use the fact here from the second case that the limit exists. So, let us say that this is L. Then 
we can use this fact and state that let us take m equal to l plus 1 what this will give it give us this will imply that xn is always less than n why because the limit we considered here to be l and we have con taken m to be uh, slightly greater than l so this can be always also uh, see uh, this can be also seen from uh, another theorem which states that every convergence sequence is a bounded one so from that we can also conclude that so from this actually we are concluding the sequence is bounded which is implying option 1 is correct so we have seen that all the options are correct so the correct answer here will be all of the above so let me delete them the correct answer will be all of the above statements are correct so now we are done with problem number three But the answer is all statements or options are correct. So please let me know if you guys have any doubt here. Uh, if not, then we are going to go to the problem number four. So I'm going to wait for a couple of moments for questions. If there are no questions, then I will move to the next problem. Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let us go to the next problem, which again uh, is a true or false question. So it states that f is a function from R to R such that the limit of n tends to infinity f a n is equal to f a. FA for any convergence series. And the convergence series is given by AN, which states that limit n tends to infinity AN is equal to A. Then the statement is f is continuous then the function f is always continuous okay so we have to comment on whether this statement that the function is always continuous is true or not so let us assume that it is not true and then proceed to see if it is holding up with our previous assumptions of this and this if this is that is true then the then we can proceed accordingly so let us assume if is not continuous so which means for all delta greater than 0 there exist 
uh, epsilon greater than 0 such that x minus a less than delta but f of x minus f of a is greater than epsilon so where the where is the discontinuity here so this discontinuity is present at the point x equal to a so that's why we are proving this point here okay so now let us proceed with this information here and take delta equal to 1. So if this is not continuous at x equal to a, then what we will have? We will have that x minus a less than 1, then there exists a epsilon greater than 0 such that f of x minus f of a is greater than epsilon. Again, let us take this to be half. So, this let us tell n equal to 1, this is n equal to 2, n equal to 2 implies delta is half. Then similarly, here also we will find epsilon greater than 0 such that right so these are true because of the discontinuity that we have assumed And we have assumed it at x equal to a, right? So similarly, we can proceed. And for n equal to n, we are going to have delta is one over n. And similarly, x minus a will be less than one by n. But there will exist a epsilon greater than zero. This epsilon they can be different in each of these cases. Okay, so we can clearly see that uh, we are for having a pattern here, and the pattern says that for as n increases, we'll always find the delta, which is one over n, or for larger n's, will it will um, change accordingly, but we'll always find that find an arbitrary point x very close to the discontinuity point a but in that case also this uh, functional value will be greater than epsilon so we can use this and say that when limit n tends to infinity x minus a is less than in 1 over n which we can say as delta n. This will imply that x is tending to a, right? So we can rename this for n equal to 1 as delta 1, delta 2. Similarly, this as delta n, x1, x2, epsilon 1, epsilon 2, n, n, 1, 2, n 1 2 n so when n tends to infinity we will have that x minus alpha is very very small and which is essentially saying that x the x is tending to a but then also f of x n 
minus f of a so let me we are to put clear so that will be greater than some epsilon so there exists epsilon greater than 0 which satisfy this criteria so what this is telling us so this is basically this condition here so let us call this condition 1 and let us call this condition 2 so this part is basically condition 2 so it is saying that condition 2 is correct but condition 1 is this but the condition 1 does not hold or it is incorrect so there is a contradiction here so the contradiction is that we started assuming that these two are true and the function is not continuous but when we use that those facts and proceeded further we say we find out that the condition 2 is correct but the condition 1 is not correct so with this contradiction we can say that our initial assumption was actually wrong What was our initial assumption? It was that the function is not continuous at x equal to a. So our assumption is wrong and the function is continuous. Okay. So with this uh, proof, we can say that the statement here, this is actually true. So this is the correct answer. Okay, uh, any doubt here? If there are no doubt, then we will proceed to the next problem. We are left with six more problems. Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let us go to the next problem, which is problem number five. So it is again a true or false question. So it says that let us assume a sequence which is n such that the summation of n equal to one to infinity a n that is diverging and then it says that the sequence of a n which is this one this may be convergent so maybe the term maybe he is of importance here so if it is it was said that this is always a convergent sequence then it will not be true but uh, there are some times when the summation of a sequence the summation of elements of a sequence will diverge but the sequence itself will converge so this will diverge but limit n tends to infinity One over n 
will exist or it will be zero. Will not diverge. So we can just since this is a uh, the maybe term is present in the statement. So we have to just produce one example to say that this is true. So we need just one example and we can take the sequence xn equal to 1 over n as an example. So we know for a fact, uh, we have learned it in class and also did similar problem that the summation of n equal to 1 to infinity 1 over n, this is diverging. This is diverging, but we can easily prove that limit n tends to infinity 1 over n is equal to 0. So that means the sequence itself is converging. So this is one of one example. So which means that the statement here is true. This is the Correct answer. And we can give some other examples also. So, for example, let us take a constant sequence. So, 1, 1, 1, 1. So, this is a constant sequence. Again, summation of 1, this is diverging, but limit tends to infinity or let me turn it with n. So, limit tends to infinity 1, this is 1. So, the sequence is converging. So, any constant sequence will be another any another set of examples to prove that this statement that when even if uh, the summation of a sequence diver sequence diverges, the sequence may itself converge. So, this is the true statement. So, please let me know if you guys have any doubt. If not, we'll move to the next problem. Okay, so I don't see any questions here. So let us go to problem number six. Then uh, it says that let us assume that xn is cos pi by n. Then we have to say whether the sequence xn, which is equivalent to cos of pi by n this is divergent or convergent so we can easily check here the limit n tends to infinity xn which will be limit n tends to infinity cos of pi by n and we can easily check that the limit is 1 so that means The sequence is converging. So this is 
Tú. So the first option is the correct option. So to shed more light onto it, we can see that limit n tends to infinity pi by n that is 0. So we can write this problem limit n tends to infinity cos of pi by n is equivalent to limit x tends to 0 cos of x which is equal to 1. So in general this is a generalization of the statement that we saw in problem number 4. So where basically of continuous for a continuous function if limit n tends to infinity a n equal to is equal to a then limit n tends to infinity f of a n will go to f of a. So let me write it out here. Similar to problem 4. So, what it is? If for a continuous function, if if limit n tends to infinity a n is equal to a, then that will imply limit n tends to infinity f of a n is equal to f of a. So here what is our f? Our f is, so let me use a different color here for that. Our f is the function cos. So fx is cos x and this is a continuous function everywhere. And what is our sequence a n here? That is given by the sequence pi over n. Then we'll have limit n tends to infinity pi over n equal to 0. So a equal to 0 for our case. And then limit n tends to infinity f of a n will be cos of a which is cos 0 equal to 1. So this is just a different uh, way of looking into the problem. So you can I hope you have uh, gathered enough insight here. So the answer is The given series is convergent. So this is the answer. I hope you have followed it uh, carefully and if there is any question please let me know in the chat box. Okay, so no questions, that means we can go to the next problem, which is problem number seven. And again, we have to find a limit. So, I'm oh, sorry. So, it is we have to find limit n tends to infinity xn, which is equal to just limit n tends to infinity n plus one by n minus 1 whole to the power n. Now for ease of calculation let us rewrite this a bit differently. So we can write limit n tends to infinity n plus 1 by n minus 1 both to the power n like uh, this. Okay, so what we have done is 
divided by n to the power n on denominator and numerator so we can again write it like limit and tends to infinity so let us call this l okay so this will be l equal to to the power n times limit n tends to infinity 1 minus 1 to the power n to the power minus n okay so now what you can do is we can evaluate these two limits individually and multiply them with each other and we are gonna find the limit okay So, in one of the previous problem of we have seen that uh, we have actually evaluated this here, this parameter limit. And we have seen that limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 over n to the power n is equivalent to summation of i equal to 1, sorry, 0 to infinity 1 over i factorial, and this is equal to actually e. Okay. So for this proof, I will be not doing in this session so you can you can just check the previous uh, assignment and uh, if you have not then i will urge you to check the i2 video also there it is done so check previous video and we will have this first term here already calculated so now what we are going to do is we are going to look in the second term so let us do that So the approach is very similar to the power minus n and we can do a binomial expansion here which will be looking like 1 plus minus n times minus n minus sorry minus n minus 1 by 2 factorial times 1 minus n whole square then there will be another term minus n okay sorry i missed the first term here that will be minus n times minus 1 over n by 1 factorial and the third term will be minus n minus n minus 1 minus n minus 2 by 3 factorial times minus 1 over n cube and so on. So this is just binomial distribution which says 1 plus x to the power n is equal to 1 plus nc1 x plus nc2 x square and then x to the power n. So since we can write nc1 as n, min, n into n minus 1 by 2 factorial or nc2 as n into 
sorry, NC2 as this and NC3 as an N2, N minus 1, N minus 2 by 3 factorial. And you will see here that the exponent is minus N. So the factorials are not defined. So NC1, NC2, these are actually defined for only positive ends. So since we are dealing with a negative here, negative number here, so we are going to use this form, which is on the right, right hand side, and put n equal to minus n. So that's how that's how we are going to get the term minus n times minus n minus one by two factorial. So this term. this term will come like this. So that is just a small derivation of how this is coming. So now you can simplify this one. So let us again call this limit uh, L. So you can simplify this to be L equal to 1 plus n times 1 over n plus you will see here that this will be n times n plus 1 by 2 factorial times 1 over n square and so on and you will see that for each of these terms here the, the negative term um, per negative uh, signs will get cancelled out for example this will be positive as this is square and here there will be a negative sign present in this summation, uh, in, in this multiplication, but when we take a cube root of a negative one, my, 1 over n, that will also give another negative uh, minus sign, and those two minus signs will get cancelled out to result in a perfectly positive number. So, this is the final term here. So, there is a limit n tends to infinity, and this. So, again, we can proceed like we did in the previous uh, previous days class also. So we can write it like n over n times 1 plus 1 over n. So this n square is taken into account here times 1 over 2 factorial. Then the second term will similarly be n over n times 1 plus 2 over n. 1 plus 1 over n that I have missed times 1 by 3 factorial and other terms. Now what will happen if we put n equal to n tends to infinity here? So limit n tends to infinity a over n where a is a constant is 0. So which implies that when you put the limit, this term will go to 0, this term will go to 0, similarly this term will go to 0 and what will be left with? We will be left with 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial and so on. Again, in the binomial expansion where the exponent is n, we will have n plus 1 terms, but since n is ten tending to infinity, we will have infinite number of terms here. So, what we will have, we will have L is, we can write, rewrite this as, this one as 0 factorial and this one as 1 factorial, sorry, 1 over 0 factorial and 1 over 1 factorial. So, this will be 1 over 0 factorial plus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial and so on. So this is nothing but summation of k equal to 0 to infinity 1 over k factorial. So let me add another page here. So what we have here is L equal to summation k 0 to infinity 1 over k factorial and again we know this series and this converges to e. So here from the previous class we have seen that this term the 
let us call this L prime. The first term in this multiplication that goes to E and we have now proved the second term also goes to E. So we have that L prime is equal to E times C which is E square. So to write it clearly, what is our L prime? Our L prime is nothing but limit n tends to infinity n plus 1 by n minus 1 to the power n and that limit goes to e square. So this is the answer here and if we look at the options then we are going to see that the third option is the correct answer uh, because it is matching with the options and the answer we have obtained here. So any doubt here? If not, then we can go to the last few problems. Okay, I don't see any questions. So let us proceed to problem number eight. Sir, can, can I ask a doubt? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, sir, limit n tend to infinity 1 minus 1 by n the whole raised to n. Uh, the answer is e, right? Uh, e raised to minus 1, right? 1 minus 1 by n the whole raised to n. Uh, so, so without shifting the uh, uh, denominator as the numerator, uh, so what you are saying is this is E inverse. Ah, uh, yes. Right. So, but what we have expanded here, it has a minus term. Ah, uh, okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So uh, okay, we will get directly. Okay. So you okay, can sir. just uh, proceed uh, like this and you will get it. So the final answer will be E square. Uh, okay. So okay, any, sir. Any, any more doubt? Okay so, yes, sir, thank you. okay, so let us go to the next problem. So again, uh, we are given a series which is in from 0 to infinity n square by 2 to the power n and we have to comment on whether this is converging or diverging. So again, we will be doing ratio test. So what this tells that for a series, of this if limit n tends to infinity a n plus 1 over a n that is l then we have two conditions if l is less than 1 So if the limit is less than 1 of this ratio, then the summation of this sequence, this is converging. If greater than 1, then diverging and if equal to 1, then this is in, inconclusive. So we can simply do this. So what will be in... We can take a n to be n square by 2 to the power n. Then what will be our n plus 1 term? That will be n plus 1 square by 2 to the power n plus 1. And similarly, a n will be a square. 2 to the power n. So what will be limit n tends to infinity a n plus 1 over a n that will be to 
to the power n by n square times n plus one square by two to the power n plus one. So let us simplify this. We will have only two at the bottom and this will be n plus 1 by n square times just 0.5 right so we can simplify this like this 1 plus 1 over n and as we know limit n tends to infinity 1 over n is 0 we will get that this limit is 0.5 so which is less than 1 so this satisfies the first case here which means the summation is converging so This is converging. And what was our series? Our series was n squared by 2 to the power n. So this converges. So this is the answer. And if we look at the options here, we are going to see that the first one is the correct answer. Okay, so any doubt here? If not, then we can go to the last two problems. Okay, I don't see any questions, so let us go to problem number nine, which is a uh, Maclaurian series expansion for this given function. So our function is fx equal to 1 over 1 minus x and we have to find the Maclaurian series so we have already done it in the class that for Maclaurian series this can be written like f equal to 0 so we are, we'll be doing the expansion at a point uh, x which is uh, at a point a which is equal to 0 okay so then the second term is going to be f prime 0 then next term will be f double prime 0 and so on the nth term similarly we can write like x to the power n by n factorial nth derivative of this function at evaluated at the point 0 okay so expand at x equal to 0 so let us find these different values here which are f of 0 f prime of at 0 and these values so let us calculate them one by one so what is a f of 0 f of 0 will be 1 by 1 minus 0 so that is 1 now what will be f prime of x our f prime of x will be ddx of 1 over 1 minus x so that will be minus 1 1 minus x square times ddx of minus x so there will be another negative sign which will get cancelled out with this and we will be left with 1 minus x square similarly if double prime x we can write as ddx of 1 over 1 minus x square and we will find that this is 2 by 1 minus x cube 
similarly if triple test x will be the dx of this which is equal to 2 times 3 1 minus x uh, whole to the power 4 at the denominator okay so now you can clearly see a pattern here right so to make it obvious let me rewrite it like this so this is nothing but 3 factorial and here the term at the bottom can be written like 1 minus x to the power 3 plus 1 and remember that this is the third derivative of the function similarly what will be the second derivative of the function we can rewrite is rewrite these two like 2 factorial divided by 1 minus x whole to the power 2 plus 1 similarly this one the first derivative as 1 factorial by 1 minus x 1 to the power 1 plus 1. So, what we have here is that the nth derivative of this function, that is from looking at this pattern, we can say that this will be n factorial over 1 minus x to the power n plus 1. Okay. And you will see if we put the value x equal to 0, that The derivative nth derivative of this function evaluated as x equal to 0 is going to be nothing but n factorial. So that is the final form that we need, and we will put these values in this expression here. So let us call this expression number 1. Use values, these values at 1. So we will have f of x equal to 1 minus x which will be equal to f of 0 that is 1 then x by 1 factorial f first derivative of f fx uh, evaluated at 0 that will be sorry 1 factorial then we will have x square 2 factorial times 2 factorial x cube times 3 factorial times divided by 3 factorial and so on. What will be the nth term? The nth term will be x to the power n. So let us focus on sorry this term. It will be x to the power n by n factorial. times nth derivative of the function evaluated at 0 that is n factorial and there will be other terms also. So we can see that for each term the denominator and numerator of the factorials that they are getting cancelled and this we can write as x to the power 1 and the first term which is 1 this one we can write as x to the power 0. We know x to the power 0 is equal to 1. So now we have a complete pattern which is that the Maclaurian series of 1 over 1 minus x that is going to be x to the power 0 plus x to the power 1 plus x to the power square and so on. So we can write it more compactly for summation n equal to 0 to infinity x to the power n. So that is the Maclaurian series of the function that is given in the question. So this is our answer. Now let us check the options which are given and we will see that the first option here that is the one which is matching with our answer and this is the correct one also. Okay. So any questions here if there are not any questions then we'll go to the last problem
Okay, so let us go to the last problem, which is problem number 10. And here we have to find the Taylor series expansion. of this function 2 to the power x and the expansion is at x equal to 1. So we know how Taylor series expansion look like. So let us assume this function fx and we are expanding at x equal to x0 say. So this will look like fx equal to fx0 plus x minus x0 by 1 factorial times so this is x minus x0 to the power 1 times f prime evaluated at x equal to x0 then what will be the next term? Next term will be x minus x0 whole square divided by 2 factorial times f prime, sorry, f double prime evaluated at x equal to x0. Similarly, we can general, general, generalize this and write the nth term as x minus x0 to the power n by n factorial times nth derivative of the function evaluated at x equal to x0 and there will be total infinite terms. So you will see that when x0 is 0 you will get the Maclaurian series which is uh, which was given in the previous question but here we are evaluating at x equal to 1. So our function is 2 to the power x and we are evaluating at x equal to 1. So, we will get this series. So, what is our f of x at 1? It is 2 to the power 1 or 2. Then, what will be our f prime x? that is g dx of 2 to the power x or 2 to the power x log 2, sorry, log, not log x, this is log 2. So, we can continue with this and check what will be the value of f prime x at x equal to 1. So, that will be 2 log 2 right now we can continue with this and calculate the double derivative of this function 2 to the power x and this will be nothing but 2 to the power x times log 2 whole square then we again uh, see a pattern what will be the nth derivative the nth derivative, nth derivative will be 2 to the power x log 2 to the power n. Okay. And if you are writing the nth derivative evaluated at the point x equal to 1, then we can concisely write it like this 2 to the power 1 log 2 to the power n. So, this is the concise form of all the expression that we are going to need to find the Taylor series. So, let us call this again 1 and using this expression at 1. So, what you are going to have? fx is equal to f of 1 is 2 to the power 1 then 
we will have x minus 1 here needless to say that x0 is equal to 1 in this formula so x minus 1 by 1 factorial times 2 so in this formula we are going to put n equal to 2 sorry n equal to 1 so that will be 2 log 2 to the power 1 then the next term will be x minus 1 square 2 factorial times 2 log 2 to the power 2 and similarly there will be infinite number, number of terms and to generalize this we can write the nth term x minus n 1 to the power n by n factorial times 2 times log 2 to the power n right so we can take all the twos common and we'll have 1 plus let us do a summation so i will be from 1 to infinity and this will be x minus i 1 to the power i by i factorial times log 2 to the power i now we have almost done but the first term 1 let us see that we can write this as the 0th term of this uh, summation here so we can write this as x minus 1 to the power 0 by 0 factorial times log 2 to the power 0 now we see that x minus 1 to the power 0 will be 1 0 factorial is 1 so this will be 1 by 1 times again log 2 to the power 0 will be 1 so this is 2 so we can rewrite this as 2 times summation i equal to 0 to infinity x minus 1 to the power i by i factorial times log 2 to the power i okay so this is the Taylor series expansion of the function fx so this is required Taylor series expansion of the function f x equal to 2 to the power x at x equal to 1. So, this is our answer. Now, let us check the options which are given and here the index is uh, different. So, we have used i and they, are, they have used n in the options. So, these are dummy index. So, this does not matter. So, you will see that the last option here this is the correct option okay so we are done with then all the problems so if you have any doubt in any of the problem or any of the problem of the last any other sessions also so please let me know since this is the last class of this uh, problem solving sessions of this course so if you have any general doubt about the other problems which have we have already discussed you can also ask me now uh, sir your summation is till infinity i equal 1 to infinity in uh, the Taylor series summation uh, here here uh -huh. i is from 0 to infinity yeah sir so n equal uh, it is infinity or, or till n there is it is n now no, there is also it is up to infinity, right? Okay. Okay. Um, so, any other questions? So, when you are doing in general this expansion, so there will be an infinite number of terms, but uh, 
for practical cases you do not have to evaluate all the terms what we do in uh, i can talk in the perspective of physics what we do there we uh, do these are correction terms so we do up to second order third order and more order to check different phenomena so for but this is the exact ex expression so that will be that will have infinite number of terms unless the derivatives become zero okay so i don't see any questions so this is uh, our last class so this was our last class sir uh, yeah uh, please revision class will be there no revision class so that uh, i am not sure uh, yet uh, because you you guys have exams on sunday right hello yes sir yes, 25th yeah 25th so i was actually taking the classes on with uh, tuesday so the next tuesday after the exam I, i don't see any point of taking any other class so but if the other tutor will be taking divisions or not that i do not have the information if he, he will be taking then uh, you will get notified by the nptel moderators okay but uh, in next tuesday there will not be any class since you guys will always uh, already have given the exam okay so as i was telling so this was our last class so thank you all for joining throughout the uh, all the classes and uh, making this very interesting i hope you have learned a lot about the course and uh, i have also learned uh, many things uh, so this was a great experience for me also so with that i would like to conclude today's session and uh, best of luck for your examinations and uh, if you have any doubt uh, you have my email and you have my uh, the nptel forum also put, put questions there and uh, we'll try to get back to you and okay so bye for today and thank you again for joining yeah thank you sir